know what you're thinking. This is supposed to be a photography cam. What's it got to do with woodworking? Well, I'm taking pictures and we're videoing this, so that's photography. But what this is all about is my second passion. And I started photography when I was in high school, camera club, and I made my first woodworking piece in 1978. I made a coffee table. And I've been making furniture, designing it, making it, and restoring furniture ever since. And today I'm starting a restoration and repurposing of an old Singer sewing machine cabinet. The sewing machine is long gone. All that's left is the cabinet. This was my mom's cabinet. She bought it in 1948. There's a piece of tape down under and it says bought January 17th, 1948. And she paid $200 $43.76 for it. Now in today's market, with inflation, that would have been about a $26, $2,700 sewing machine. So this was a big purchase for my mom back in 1948. Makes the cabinet 71 years old. It's not quite an antique yet. It has to be 100 years old. But it is a nice piece. And I want to make something new out of it. And I've thought long and hard about this. I've had it for uh, several years now. It's just been kind of in storage. And I think what I want to do is make it kind of like a, a sideboard where just a little table with maybe a lamp or a vase or something on it. And then if you have a party, you could open it up and you could lay out hors d'oeuvres, drinks, or whatever you wanted to on it. So I think it would be a nice addition. Now, there are some problems. Let's take a closer look at the cabinet. Okay, the cabinet is a, a Singer number 40 and it's walnut. It's, uh, and I'm not sure, but I, I think Maybe the top is solid walnut with a burl veneer on it. It has a beautiful burl. It's been butterfly. I don't know how well you can see it now. But uh, it's a beautiful butterfly burl. What that means is they, they cut two slices on the veneer and then they lay them out like this. So it makes a, a really beautiful butterfly. Now there are some problems with the cabinet. Number one, the veneer on top here is coming loose. Something's been spilled on it here and it's eaten through the varnish. I imagine this was varnished. And there's a little chip out of the veneer right there. So all those things have to be fixed. That means because this is down to the bare wood right here, I'm going to have to strip this and then sand it and refinish the top. Uh, there's no way that I can make that look good without stripping everything off. It has a little pull-out drawer here in the front, and I'm going to change that and make it a full drawer. Of course, this will go. That's the old dust cover for the bottom of the sewing machine. The major problem is this leg. No, it's split right here all the way up so that's got to be fixed and then part of the toe has been knocked off so I'm gonna have to make a new toe and fix this split and that's probably the first thing I'll do is to repair this leg what I'm going to do is I'll take the cabinet completely apart so I can get that leg off and the back leg over here is loose anyway so the legs need to be tightened up and taken off. Then on the inside here, 
course we have the old hole for the sewing machine. And then we've got this kind of a trap door to catch the sewing machine when you bring it up and out. And what I'm going to do is take and bring this cut over to match this width, come back up, Now, inside here, this has got to be stripped and redone too. Something got here and here, and it's taking it down to the bare wood. So the whole thing is going to have to be stripped and refrenched. Now, the, the aprons down here, I think they're good. I'm not going to do anything with those. And I just noticed there's a nice burl in the front of the drawer, drawer here too, and it's uh, also butterfly. So that's a Singer sewing machine number 40, and we're going to restore it and repurpose it, and hopefully it's going to make a nice piece. What we need to do now is get to work. Okay, the first thing I want to do is take the top off, because I'm going to be turning it upside down, and I don't want to mess it up any more than it already is, you know, by twisting it around on the bench and stuff. And the next project, after I get the top off, will be to take the leg off and see if I can fix it. The reason I want to do the leg first is that if I can't fix the leg, why then what I have here is parts, <laughs> scrap. And so uh, it's really important that I can get in here and fix that leg. Now, there's some things you need to think about when you're disassembling an old piece of furniture. So let's take a look get a closer look here as to what that needs to be. When taking apart a piece of antique furniture, you want to make sure that all the pieces go back the same place they came out of, even the screws. You want to make sure they go back in the same holes. So I'll be marking these hinges uh, right front, uh, rear left, rear right, and front right so that uh, I know exactly where they came out of and where they go back to. You know, back in those days they didn't have CNC machines and so it's important that we get this right. So the second thing is that all these little screws takes a certain size screwdriver. You want to make sure you get the right size screwdriver to take out these screws so you don't booger them all up. So I'll be getting my screw out here and uh, we'll keep, we'll start taking this apart. Looks like this is the right size screwdriver. So let's take these out. We'll lay each one aside so we can put them back in the hinge the same place they came out of. Okay, we've got our hinges off, so let's get this up on the table here and start taking those legs off. Well, this is the leg in question, and it's really split. The split starts right here, and it goes all the way up to here on the inside. Now, it looks like the toe was actually more than one piece, and what's happened here is, is the piece has just broke out. That makes it easier to glue a piece in here, but it's not going to make it any easier to carve it. So. Uh, we got our work cut out for you here. And what I want to do here is get a wedge in the split and get glue to run down all through here and clamp it up. And I think the first thing I want to do is get my clamps and figure out how I'm going to clamp it. We'll dry clamp it first and uh, then we'll uh, take the clamps off, put some glue down in there and uh, see what we can do. And 
I want to spread this as much as I can without splitting it any further, which is not going to be a whole lot. So uh, let me get some clamps here and uh, we'll get started. Well, it looks like it's going to clamp up okay. So I'm going to take the clamps off now and see how much glue I can get out of the crack and get some glue to run down through there and get her clamped back up. So that'll be our next project here. Okay, this looks pretty good. It went back together real nice. Get some of the glue wiped off here, the excess that's running out, and uh, we'll let that dry up and see what we got. After turning this upside down, I noticed there's a lot of grime and dirt, dirt and grime, and maybe some mildew underneath there. So I've got some warm soapy water here, and I'm going to wash that real good. and. Uh, then I'll probably spray it with a uh, dilute uh, bleach and water solution to make sure all the mildew is killed. Well, as you can see, I've got it completely apart. Well, good morning. Last night, or yesterday, we glued all this up and I had a, a moment of inspiration. And I went back and looked to where I had been storing the Singer cabinet and guess what I found? I found the piece of the leg, the bottom of the leg here, the toe that had fallen off. And so I, I glued it up uh, off camera so it'd be ready to go this morning. So this leg now is whole but once again and uh, that was really exciting I wasn't looking forward to, you know, this little piece I made, I wasn't looking forward to chiseling that out. I'm not much of a chiseler. So uh, that was good news. Well, I finally got the little door off. I'm going to set that aside for now and uh, work on the top of gluing up the laminate. All the laminated pieces are still solid. So, that's good news. So, I'm going to get some clamps and uh, glue that up over there. Well, I got to take a little break. The battery went dead. But we're back live now. I've got this all glued up, as you can see. And uh, I'm going to have to leave that overnight, just like the other piece. So I think in the meantime, I'm going to work on this little drawer front. And I need to take this stuff off. Probably need the heat gun. It's got all it's got is nails in here along the edge. There's nails, and of course, it's glued. So, I'll take my heat gun and clean up the ends and then run this through the saw and flatten these out even. So, that's where I'm at. So, uh, I'll get to working on that. Well, it took me about a half hour to clean up that little bit there on the bottom here. It's not real clean yet. I'm going to have to do some sanding on it. I need to cut these off next. Figure out how to do it. I can't get the handle off. I don't want to force it off. I don't want to break it. 
There's no screw on it, or at least there's nothing I can see. It's probably glued on there. But if I use the heat gun to heat this up, why well, it'll ruin the finish here, and I don't want to do that. So I've already got it a little hot here on the edge, but uh, I think that'll rub out. So uh, I have to probably hand saw these off and plant it down smooth. Okay, I'm going to saw these off my hand. This is what's called a Japanese pull saw. Normal saw, when you saw, it cuts on the downstroke. Japanese pull saw saws on the pull stroke. You get a lot better control with that. So I'm going to take and put it along here and uh, try to saw these off as even as I can. Very even. So I need to turn it over now and uh, do the other end. This is 150 sandpaper and I'm just going to sand this and clean up the edges. When I get it done sanding, when I get uh, ready to put it all together and stuff, I'll put a a little stain on that to cover up the lines here. Cover up these lines and uh, then a coat of shellac to protect it. And it'll be in good shape. Edges all fixed up here. Now I'm going to wet sand the front and uh, it'll be all ready to go in after that. Take uh, some wet sandpaper. This is called waterproof. And that'll keep it from plugging up. I'm just doing this lightly. I don't want to cut through the finish that's there. This is uh, 600 grit. So all it's really going to do is just kind of smooth it out. Well, let's see how that looks. I'm going to wet it down. Just more or less took the finish off of it, the shine. But that'll allow the next coat to stick to adhere. So I think this piece is looking pretty good. And I'm ready to make the drawer.